I realize I am but a dissenting voice, maybe even considered a dissident, for a lot of you in your bubble that I refer to as the country of Tony Khan I stan. Because sometimes, no matter what, there's always an excuse, there's always a defense, there's always some type of justification, rationale, spin, goalpost moving bullshit, whatever it is, when it comes to Tony Khan and AEW. Hence, Tony Khan I stan. You see? It's a sizable population of you. But not quite as big as you might think, but certainly vocal. That's for damn sure. The Taliban slash Tea Party of the internet wrestling community, perhaps, I don't know. But similar shit that I harp on with WWE is that you should treat this television time that you get, even if it's a little later than you would like it, even if it's not ideal, even if it is only an hour, you should treat this shit like it's gold. Like at the beginning when they started Rampage, I think somebody had called it, was it Excalibur called it the fastest hour in pro wrestling? Like that's a great tagline. That's a great identity for the show and this part of the brand. And you should absolutely live up to that. And they don't. Last week's viewership numbers were abysmal and atrocious. And there's no spin or justification you could put on that, guys. It's a reflection of this shit ain't working very well right now. And it's because, similar to WWE, you look at a lot of this crap and you say, what's the point? Why should I care? If you're going to have this hour every Friday night from 10 to 11 p.m. Eastern, you need to make it freaking count. And you cannot tell me, honestly, objectively, looking at this show and say that it really counted. And why do I say that? Because I could even look at the echo chamber that is Tony Khan I stand land of social media, in this case Twitter. Like There was not a lot of buzz about this Rampage show this week. Because even a lot of the same AEW fans that live in Tony Khan I stand on Wednesday nights don't travel over to watch on Friday nights. They just don't. And you can tell. You can tell. And I can't blame them. Like, look, I know a lot of you are going to sit there because in Tony Khan I stand, you live under the Meltzer Magoo model of it's moves and matches that matter the most. And this is the type of wrestling that you've always wanted. But Tony Nese versus Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship is a waste of time. What is so unique about Tony Nese that you need to give him any type of spotlight or platform here? You don't. You got enough other dudes just like him. Why add one more just another guy to the mix? You don't need any more Jags. You need guys that can stand out. You need guys that can be unique. And with Sammy Guevara, he's your TNT champion. If you're talking about this is just like a world championship, even though we fucking know it's a mid-card title, don't be stupid. It can have importance and prestige. This is not the way to add importance and prestige. There's no story here. There's no reason to get invested. Oh, enjoy the matches and the open challenges. He just had one with Jay Lethal. Lather, rinse, repeat. Nothing of consequence happens. What's next? Okay, sure. You enjoyed some of the matches, some of the moves. Okay, and then what's the point? You gotta do better than this. Because this just feels like a random fuck-off match where you know the belt's not changing, so why the hell would you watch? And then this Jurassic Express Christian promo. You know, the reality is this Jurassic Express should have been one one just to take the damn belts off the Young Bucks, not the damn Lucha Bros. Sorry? No, I'm not sorry, because it's fucking true. Because at least I knew with the Jurassic Express, because of how much of a fucking hard-on they have for Jungle Boy, and the fact that Christian has somehow become to be associated with them, and they've gotten away from the Marco stunt crap, this was a group that they were going to feature prominently on TV every week. The Lucha Bros, they fucking don't. It's like they just, every couple of weeks, 
happen to remember, hey, we've got tag team champions. Let's utilize them. So this whole Jurassic Express Christian promo backstage, where basically they're just talking about they're waiting for their shot. Okay. They should have already had their shot. They should have already gotten the damn straps. Putting them on the Lucha Bros was stupid. Period. Period. And you're going to say, well, part of the Lucha Bros main evented. And we're going to get to that in a moment. And it only further validates my goddamn point. This Jade cargill Janai Kai match, blink and you miss it. Like, I'm all for a squash match for Jade Cargill. That's fine. Keep it short, sweep, and to the goddamn point. Don't reinvent the damn wheel here. But was it really necessary? Was it really required? Because you've just had a promo face-off between Thunder Rosa and Jade Cargill. Or you could have could you have given Janai Kai potentially the chance at a couple of minutes and then have Jade come in and run in and fuck her up and then Thunder Rosa do the thing. Like this felt more like you were just in a rush to get it over with than you were like legitimately trying to invest in this. And let's be clear, when it comes to Thunder Rosa and Jade Cargill, you should absolutely be investing in both of them. These should be two of your pillars of AEW's women's division. It was horrible. You bring in Adam Cole so that way he could be aligned with the Young Bucks. So you got the Elite calling out Cassidy and the best friends. That's the best utilization you have for Adam Cole? And honestly, I'll even say this. Yeah, it sounds weird coming from me. But this is the best you got for the Bucks of Suck? Like if I just said flat out, straight up, one-on-one, -on -one, you wanted to create a full story a program between Adam Cole in Orange Cassidy. I'm like, it's a little weird. Well, the dynamics are all that great, but I get it because from an AEW standpoint, Orange Cassidy is absolutely one of their most popular acts to the point where they have ex utilized him and tried to squeeze too much juice out of Orange Cassidy because of the temptation of saying, hey, he brings some decent viewership numbers. Hey, on our social media platforms, he brings the goods, especially on YouTube. I get it, but it just didn't work. Cares about the best friends. Got Eddie Kingston calling out 2.0. I just get to Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho and who gives a shit? <laughs> Stop trying to make me care about Daniel Garcia. I don't. Just like It's just like a Tony Nese and so many of the other guys in this goddamn roster. I don't care. They're the same. Have some damn standards. Somebody stand out for the love of freaking God and be unique. Be unique. That's all I'm asking. Like the Brian David Danielson and John Silver hype video. Okay, that ties into next week's show. You know, we need to get to a point where we make John Silver AEW's version of Eric Young, and that's exactly who he is. That's exactly what he should be with a, you know, different spin on it. But, you know, go more with that. But people really like John Silver. Let him be something more and more consistently. And it doesn't help when you put him in this big schmoz of a group where he can't really stand out. I saw some people talking about on social media that, oh my God, Brian Daniels, he wants to lead a faction and that'll be a great thing. And they're talking through the names. Ding dong, dumb dicks. This company has enough talents as it is that they're trying to figure out how to put on TV. They have enough goddamn factions. They can't even bother to put the factions that they have on TV together at the same time. Why the hell would you want to add another one to the goddamn mix? You're insane. Well, they do it in Japan. This isn't fucking Japan. And that's not the audience you're going after. Or maybe it is, and that's part of the problem. And I knew we were in trouble when it was only like 10.35 and we had already gotten to the main event. I said, oh, God. It's going to be FTR versus Pac and Penta El Cerro Miedo. And it's going to be 20 plus minutes of spots and then some type of bullshit finish. Well... It was 20 plus minutes of spots or 20 minutes of spots and a regular finish. And then you've got the whole goddamn Malachi Black thing where he's coming out and he's taking out Pox other eye. And at that point in time, I want to gouge my own goddamn eyeballs out. Oh my God, this is great. This is what true wrestling fans want. Pac, who let's be clear, what exactly has he done in AEW He's been more conspicuous by his absence than his presence over the past 12 or 18 months. And I like the dude. I like the talent. Like, here's a dude that takes shit seriously, 
that learn to stop just being a dude that does spots and actually try to be a performer, try to be a character. Like, I like the dude. I support Pac all the way, but what has he done? So now Malachi Black goes from the shit with Cody Rhodes that ultimately accomplished nothing. It was just a pathetic thing for Cody Seated to try to get himself over to now he comes here. What's the point? Oh, maybe he's bringing, bringing Pack into the House of Black, and oh my God. <laughs> and for what? Who gives a shit? Like, I look at AEW Rampage this week, and the fundamental number one problem I have is when I look at the show and everything that happened, I say, who gives a shit? There's nothing earth-shattering. There's nothing that leaves you on the edge of your seat. That no, there's nothing even here that makes you say, my God, I got to tune into Dynamite on Wednesday to see what the hell is going to happen. And while you want Dynamite and Rampage to be separate shows with separate identities, and I get that, there should be some type of synergy, flow, interconnectedness, where one leads into the other, leads into the other, and it becomes a cycle, and it doesn't. This is almost where I wish this company, when it started, to actually be different and not just a different version of WWE, which is what they are. I wish they would have instituted some type of off-season. Or sat there and said, hey, we're going to run Dynamite for four months, take six weeks off, and in that six weeks we'll do a shorter Rampage. And then four months on of Dynamite, six weeks of Rampage. I know it doesn't give them the most money, and that's a consideration here, absolutely, but you know, we're going to run into the same problems with them as they're just going to throw out shit some weeks because having to book shows like this 52 weeks of the year is just unsustainable and it's stupid. And it leads to you undercutting yourself. And we're getting to that space now with AEW where they have some really damn good shows sometimes. That's absolutely true. And you look at a show like this and you say, if it didn't air, I wouldn't care. What's the point? And that is not a good place to be.